In this video, we'll take a little bit of time to talk about what are known as vector components and vector projections. Uh, by the end of this video, you're going to see that a component of a vector onto another is a number, a scalar. So a component is a number, but a projection is a totally new vector. Uh, these are definitely related to each other. T to find a vector projection, you're going to start by computing a vector component. Uh, the pit place where this would be necessary to, to utilize would be in a situation like we're going to talk about by looking at this diagram for a few seconds. The force that's being applied to move this wagon is not a horizontal force. The force is diagonal, right? We're pulling upward and we're pulling forward. But the motion is obviously only happening horizontally. So what component of this force vector that's in the path of the person's arm is actually working in the direction of the motion? Uh, and it would be necessary to do stuff like this to, to do certain things with work problems in, in physics and engineering. Uh, or other situations where you're just trying to take a portion of a vector and, and kind of figure out what portion of it acts in another path. So on this screen, we will talk about the geometry behind a vector component. Uh, so a component, if I'm trying to figure out what component of vector A actually travels in the path of vector B, what I can do is, is I can think about this little right triangle being completed right here. Uh, I know that theta is the smallest angle between vector A and vector B. So if I wanted to figure out what this length is, cosine of the angle would be adjacent, which is down here, uh, divided by hypotenuse, which is over here. So if I'm solving for that adjacent side, I'm going to multiply cosine of the angle by the hypotenuse, which in the hypotenuse would be just the magnitude of, of vector A. Um, this right here is something that you can relate with another theorem that we took some time to develop in a different video. And that's in the upper right hand corner of the screen here. If I do the dot product between vector A and vector B, that's always going to be equivalent to the magnitude of the two vectors multiplied together times cosine of the angle between them. Now what I have down here is, is I have the magnitude of A times cosine of theta. So if I'm looking to figure out what this component of vector A traveling in the path of vector B is, the shortcut to this process would be to just solve this equation for what we see as the bottom leg on the triangle. Solve it for the magnitude of A times cosine of theta, which is essentially just going to be dividing the dot product, dividing the left-hand side of this equation by the magnitude of vector B. So the way that we figure out what portion of vector A travels in the path of vector B is we do the dot product between the two calculations divided by the magnitude of the vector that you're moving in the path of. When we go for a projection, what we're trying to do is, is we're actually trying to figure out what this vector is uh, that's traveling in the same path as vector B. So in on the previous screen, we talked about a component, right? A component is a number. What portion of a vector is traveling in the path of another? A projection of vector A onto vector B is going to actually figure out what vector from A is traveling in the same path as vector B is. Uh, so notationally, you see how it's, it's denoted. Uh, it is a new vector. The new vector is going to have this, the direction indicated by the vector that you're projecting onto. And then its magnitude is going to be the component that we just talked about from the previous screen, right? The, the length of this little uh, non-shaded in blue vector that you see on top of the pink vector, the magnitude of that is just the component that we talked about in, on the previous screen. So there's this formula right here. I'm going to kind of show you a, a way to kind of get to that. Um, if you're memorizing this, this is probably going to be the thing that you memorize, or it might be easier for you to think about where this comes from. So look at what I have right here. This right here is just the component calculation like we talked about on the previous screen. So this is going to provide the magnitude of the vector that's right on top of the pink vector. And then this right here from some of our other discussions, this is vector B divided by its magnitude. So this is going to be a unit vector. And this unit vector is going to travel the same direction as vector B. So we're taking a unit vector that travels the same path as direction as, as vector B does, and we're multiplying that by the component uh, from the previous screen. So we'll do one quick example here, and then we'll wrap this up. So in this 
particular bunch of problems, we are asked to find uh, the component of vector A onto vector B and then the projection of vector A onto vector B. Since component goes into that projection calculation, we'll start with com the component. So the component calculation from a few screens ago is going to be found by taking the dot product between the two vectors and dividing by the magnitude of the vector that you're traveling the path of. Uh, so dot product is just going to be multiply the x components, multiply the y components, multiply the z components, add those results. We get 6 for the dot product. And then the magnitude of vector b is just going to be a three-dimensional distance formula applied to the ordered triple 1, 2, 2, and 0, 0, 0. So it's basically just going to be the x component squared plus the y component squared plus the z component squared, all tossed under a root. What we end up with here, if we simplify, is we end up with 6 over 3 or a component of 2. So the, the portion of vector A that's traveling in the same path as vector B is, is a magnitude of two units. What is the actual vector, the portion of the vector for vector A that travels in the same path as vector B? So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm taking the magnitude from the component that I just figured out. So the magnitude is going to be two. But I want this new vector for this projection computation, I want it to travel the same path as vector B does. So I'm finding a unit vector that travels the same direction as vector B. So to do that, we're simply taking vector B and, and we're dividing by its magnitude. Um, I kind of have it written a little differently on this next line here. I knew that the magnitude of vector B was 3 from earlier on. So what I had went ahead and did is I kind of took 2 over that magnitude of 3, and then I'm just multiplying vector B by 2 thirds. And when I multiply by a scalar, I just multiply all pieces of the vector by the scalar, end up with this result that you see right here. So component is a magnitude, a scalar, uh, and a projection is a new vector.